in this athletics post open cycle too. Break down. Go. Boom. You lead me in? Yep. <laughs> this is terrible. No one's going to watch that. All right. Everyone's going to watch this shit. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Misfit Athletics post-open cycle two breakdown. We are going to chat about what to expect in the next six to eight weeks of uh, programming on the blog. Myself, we have Drew, and we have old Sherby Sherb. Without Sherb. any stains on his shirt. How First new is time that, for though? Everything. No stains. Thanks, and Progenics, for giving me a nice white shirt. I can get stained. Thank you. For the first time, Whoa. Sherb did something really great in his life, right? Went to regionals. What were? Clean shirt? Well, that was... <laughs> is that a, that's is just that a, is okay. That that's just normal. Went to regionals, and how'd you do? Came in 12th out of 30, starting at last place and finishing 12th. So. On a team. Yeah. Good weekend. It was fun. I had a great time. Pretty awesome. So, I'm sure about a great time. Me and Drew didn't have that. Well, we had a great time, but it was like a long time. Yeah. So, a lot of, lot of weekends, a lot of athletes, yeah, a lot of... Three back-to-back -back couldn't have been the most enjoyable experience by the end. Ready to get home at it that was point. at the beginning of each weekend, and then by Saturday night, it was like, "No more, please, no more." No, and you do it no. again. Over and I'm over thinking again. about programming Strict Nate at the affiliate every day for a month, so I can just sit here and watch it. Yeah, it was really exciting <laughs> to watch twelve heats of that at least Beautiful. over the last three weeks. It's pretty good. Yep. Wolf. Cool. So now that we got that out of our system, let's talk about the programming that you are going to see on the blog. And actually, you are already in Test Week as we film this now. So you have experienced some of it. Um, let's start with the lifts. Drew, what's different comparing uh, post-open cycle two to post-open cycle one? And we are leading into cycle one after the games. W what are they going to expect? Yes. Yeah, so you guys can expect a very similar back squat cycle um, with the focus being cleaning up the movement because you need to be at an intermediate to an advanced level to be able to do the cycle one volume cycle. So we want to make sure that you guys are really comfortable with squatting. We're going to let you throw the knee sleeves back on, the only shoes, all that in cycle one. We're really focused on you guys cleaning your movement up. Some of the percentages are different. You guys are going to find some different reps. It's going to be mixed up a little bit, but it's that standard three to five sets of three to five reps in you know the 70 to 80% range. So keep squatting, keep filming it, keep looking back and making sure that you're improving on your weaknesses and you'll be ready for cycle one. Um, some of the... Uh, Olympic lifting work is going to be a little bit of touch and go. We're going to try to transition into um, some work that will transfer a little bit better to your conditioning pieces. Um, and then one thing that I really like about it is a lot of your uh, clean work has the jerk in it as well. So you're not going to be going from the blocks with the jerk. You might have squat clean and jerk triples. Does that sound fun to you? Woof. And that's not, not, that's not uh, just the third rep. You throw it overhead. It's all, it's all three. So... You're going to be getting a little extra volume in there with that. Um, very doable percentages, um, but it's still challenging to make sure that you get into the right positions, midline, all that, once the breathing starts to go up. Um, I like that with the jerk because, especially after all three, not just the third, you actually really have to pay attention because if you are super tired after five heavy weightlifting reps and that sixth jerk, easy to fail. So right. if you're not very spot easy. on, you're going to fail it. Uh, deadlift, we actually... Um, had a uh, really good luck with some imams with the regionals athletes. They seem to like it. They seem to get a lot out of it. So we're dropping it on you guys. It's, it's not pretty brutal. I did it like once or twice. Yeah. It was tough. Um, so you guys are going to be doing your whatever. Let's say it's five by five, but it's going to be every minute. So um, <laughs> throws again another new challenge in there, making sure that we're always remembering that we're CrossFitters and not just solely weightlifters. Last but not least is what we call touch-and-go push jerk work. It's basically just you don't get to re-rack it, and what we're looking for is that Metcon speed of being able to catch the bar like Sherb's miming for us over wow, here into the you. dip. Um, he doesn't actually have the mobility to do that with a fixed object in his hand, <laughs> so he's trying to show Dumbbells. off. Yeah, he's trying to show off right now. Um, so that's what you guys are going to see for um, – that's what you guys are going to see for lifts, the the – Snatch will transition back and forth between power to squat. The clean and jerk will transition back and forth from power clean to split jerk to squat clean to split jerk. So you're going to get a lot of uh, fatigued split jerking in, in there, which is a very good way to build up skill. Awesome. Very awesome. Okay. Conditioning. Um, I'll cover this. It's going to be um, similar to what you guys have already been doing. However, uh, if you notice in the previous cycle, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> getting some sound. Was the sound bites? Is that what you say? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Sound bites. Wow. It's an explosion of excitement for this case, next part. In case we needed it, you yeah. know, for later. <laughs> um, so the the difference in conditioning is that you're going to be doing bigger chunks of movement. So uh, one example I can give is if you look at the two test weeks from uh, post-open cycle one to cycle two, um, one of the test pieces in the first cycle was a, a ladder of um, uh, like one, one, two, two, three, three, and the reps build up and it's short and it's intense and it's difficult. Um, but this cycle, we want you to do a lot more at once. So like instead of a ladder climbing, starting small and getting bigger near the end, we're just going to give you something like a 2159 or like a 302010. You'll be forced to kind of go through bigger chunks of the movements, um, stay efficient, keep your heart rate as controlled as possible while still going through these things with intensity. So we're going to kind of ask a little more of you, uh, bigger sets, try to push for, in certain circumstances, things unbroken, not always the, the right play, but it'll give you the opportunity to do that when that time comes. Um, but again, just a lot of classic CrossFit. It's um, you know, more of the same leading into that kind of raw conditioning from cycle one that we'll see after the games. Another thing that's kind of sprinkled in there uh, will be the opportunity for you guys to test the regional events. So if you haven't already done your own mock regional, which I'm sure plenty of you have, um, some of the conditioning pieces will you know, be the regional events from this year, just, just for fun. Um, so that's kind of what you can expect from that. Also, a uh, bigger dose of ski erg, right? Yeah, there's plenty of ski erg coming up in the cycle. So if you don't have one, get one. Sure. What's um, the sub for ski ergs? There is one. Row, do a bike. You know, if you don't have those machines, you have to make do with what you have. I think the, the closest thing you're going to find is the rower. But, I mean, never want to pick one stimulus as your go-to for a substitute. So um, hopefully you can acquire one in the next few weeks. And if not... Um, be cool with putting the bike in, putting the rower in, maybe push a sled every once in a while or do some burpees. You Is it worthwhile, it the ski erg? It's a pretty cool tool. Um, I like it a lot for just the, the change of stimulus. It's very unusual the way you have to like change the way you breathe. The movement's just something different. We always dynamically open the hip. Now we're closing the hip. It's right. just a very different movement. If you want to know how to do it, don't watch Travis. Um, wow. Calling oh. him out. Jeez. Um, but yeah, I think it's a cool tool. Um, you know, when we opened our second affiliate, that was one of the things I wanted to buy. And you were like, that's kind of silly. And then you played on one. And you're like, nah, I see why someone would want to use it. So, And then you do a tough workout on one. You it, go, oh my it's God. It's terrible. Yes. You know, practice a ski erg with something else. It's closing the lat, like chest to bar pull ups or toes to bar or muscle ups. And it's a, it's a different ball game for sure. Yep. So we will see more of that. And uh, like you said, if you don't have one, there's no great sub. You don't have to ask. You just have to sub something else in. It's not going to be the same, but it is what it is. My recommendation is keep the time domain somewhat similar. Sure. You know, if you're not sure, maybe you can ask somebody who has one on the blog, like how long did the skier part take you? And we can give you a suggestion that way. But that would be the best guess for me. And the ski is similar to a row. Like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty similar. similar, especially yeah. people that are unskilled on it. So if it's a 500-meter ski, it's a 500-meter row. Yeah. It's, that's the easiest way to, to do it. Um, so that's the conditioning. Nothing uh, groundbreaking there. Just uh, some really difficult workouts coming your way. Um, it's going to be fun for me to watch you guys go through this stuff. Not so fun to do, but <laughs> hey, it's the way it goes. Gymnastics. Um, do you want to talk about the differences? You kind of liked when, what, you, what you saw, what you were looking at. and you. Yeah, I mean, I think the bigger chunks are something that you know athletes would be comfortable with. If you look at the test week, we got 50 muscles for time starting off day one of test week, which for a lot of athletes is holy shit. What happened to 30 the days of right. 30 muscles for time? Who's doing 50 nowadays? But you know, Seth and I figure if we can actually do it, then we need to spice it up a little that's bit. That's true. That's Say, a good point. Wait, you can do 50? 30. Oh, 30. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, I mean, I could do 50. <laughs> How much time you got, buddy? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I've done 50 in my life for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Well, maybe I haven't. I don't know. Um, so something like, you know, there's a regional event from last year where you had to do 15 muscles unbroken, like... 50 for time is a good way to kind of see where you're at with something like that, whether or not you could do 15 or... When the high-end regional to. athletes are smashing 25 in an opening set, like 30 for time... It's like not a thing anymore. Yeah, it's just not. It's time to it's time to kind of go to that point of failure. Everyone remembers, if you've been crossfitting for a while, when you did 30 muscle-ups for time, you would do like your first set, you hit seven, you're like, oh, this is easy. I'm going to cruise through this. Then you get four more, and you get two more, you and then you're doing singles, singles the way, and then yeah. you have like... 12 singles left and the clock just like melts so what you're screwed. I think I used a calendar to time my first 30 muscles yeah, for time. So same. So, <laughs> I mean, and that's just one example from test week, but uh, there are plenty of other examples you guys will see where we're going to force you to do bigger chunks. And, and the reason you need to do that is because if they come up in workouts, you have to start uh, experiencing um, how that you are going to deal with it yourself. So 
A, we're going to get better and more efficient because that's what we do. We work on these things. We try to clean these movements up. But B, uh, there's a lot of experience that, that kind of lends to the strategy as you attack things in competition or even in training just to make sure that you maximize the intensity you can put in the piece. So um, if, you, if we break it up really small the time for you, it's easier. It Maybe it guarantees the intensity, but it also guarantees that you know, you may take bigger breaks. If we make you do bigger chunks at once, you're going to have to find a way to get through it, and that's pretty important to do. So that's kind of the big difference here, just like in the conditioning. We're just asking you to do bigger doses of things. Um, yeah, that's about it. The other thing we've added in, and I don't know if you want to talk about it. I think you yeah, love I this mean, tool as much as anybody. I think we're, you know, back to time of year where it's getting a little nicer and it's time to break out the sleds. I think, you know, the first week we've got uh, a sled drag, which is more of like a, a flush, I think, of anything else. But it's not really a test, but we have some other right. pulls, some pushes, some drags. It's going to get heavy. It's going to be light. It's going to be sprint. It's going to be yeah. moderate. It's just They've changing been your stimulus. Yeah, yes. it's just a way to make you, you know, have to use the stimulus somewhat differently each time so that you're not always comfortable. Like, oh, it's heavy, so I could just kind of walk with the sled. Or it's light, so I sprint. And you have to you know, be ready with all kinds of different, um, I guess, loads and styles of getting that sled from point A to point B. The two things I love about the sled, and before I even say this, people ask me, like, oh, if you were stuck on a desert island, which equipment would you bring? I'd bring a sled and a bike, like, if I could pick two things. You can get really fit with a sled if you can put weight on it. It can be used as a conditioning tool to kind of hit parts of your – parts of your game that just you can't replicate with anything else like sprinting with a sled is not the same as sprinting it feels way worse and there's almost no movements you can do inside the gym that replicates that feeling i mean everyone's had quad burn but when your whole body feels like it's lighting on it's fire a burpee it's a pistol it's a back squat yeah, it's, it's all those movements at the exact same time very tough to get that stimulus with anything else both conditioning and it's a great accessory for strength work i mean um Powerlifters have used it for years and, and for building speed and stuff. I mean, it's great for Olympic lifting too, especially that fast switch sprinting with a, the heavy load. So That last thing affected the sled when you get done with it. It's just like it should be over now, but it's two it minutes later and I st it's still with me. Like can't there's walk. nothing else that gives you that feeling. I mean, everyone right. does that, that fran and gets that feeling, but well, you know, two times a week you can give yourself that same feeling. You're going to adapt you know, fast. And it shouldn't beat you up as bad as uh, like super heavy lifting over and over and over again. Um, it shouldn't wreck your CNS in the same way. I mean, yeah, you still need to recover from a sled, and you'll find in the program that there are times that you need to, you know, there's, there's guided, um, we explain the pieces, so there's, there's guidance for the pieces. So sometimes we want you to do a marching pace where you just stay steady and move. Sometimes it's walking to flush like Sherba saying. Sometimes it's sprinting with light weight to really, you know, uh, work on, some part of your your game so we'll, we'll kind of guide you guys uh best we can to, to make sure that you guys are hitting the stimulus that we're looking for coinciding with the day yeah oh you know what i'll, I'll uh, jump into one more thing before we uh talk about whatever else you want all right uh the warm-ups so the warm-ups will be very similar to last cycle as well the difference is um I've just decided that we're going to step up the weakness warm up. So for years and years, we kind of just stuck with. Dude, I noticed that. I got screamed at at regionals by spectators about weakness warm ups. About the the burpees going from fifty to seventy five. Oh yeah, are they hundred now? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay, well maybe. Let I me mean, look. look. You didn't throw those in so. there yet, but you no. might. I mean, there are other ones: the mile and a half run, yeah, three k ski, three k right. row, five k bike. That's yeah, a, that's I'm a pretty sure the guy. Jump. I think my mic is dead. No, I hear you just fine. I'm pretty sure the guy was drunk you. that was yelling at me too. So it was it was wildly entertaining. He's like, "What the fuck happened with that?" I was like, "I mean, fifty was getting kind of easy." Yeah, fifty is easy. The games guys are doing a hundred. We figured, you know, if they want to be fifty, it's gonna have to be like fifty dumbbell burpee box overs, and people don't want that. So <laughs> those are so fun. I love so those. Pipe down out there. <laughs> He's probably gonna watch this and be like, oh, "Fuck you!" <laughs> yeah. So the run Sorry, will be bro. like a mile and a half instead of a mile. Like he said, three k ski, three k row. We're we'll just stepping up a little further. Oh. Um, Hopefully, whatever pace that you've kind of found that you can do this in in the previous cycle, you can maintain for that extra couple minutes and just kind of build that pathway a little a little deeper. Just just kind of take it to the next level. Yeah, I mean, we just kind of crushed that. We did. Um, one one thing to consider: <clears throat> every time a new cycle comes around, we have new people coming to the site. Um, so if you're kind of wondering what we're up to, we finished the open. Um, some people go on to regionals. Some people don't. The people that don't, we're pretty sure. He pointed at me. I went to regionals. Some he pointed at me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Seb. I missed it again. God damn you. It's eight years in a row. So <laughs> uh, you need to lift. 
you need to do some conditioning and you need to clean up your gymnastics. So we really try to simplify things. We try not to get gimmicky or test things out or anything along those lines. It's let's, let's build some confidence back. We have 16 weeks to do it. And if you did just follow cycle one, we're already seeing some big PRs in cycle two Huge. Or, or in retest week, which is really exciting. Um, we're going to see more. You guys are going to be a full step ahead of the people that just beat the crap out of their bodies doing regionals in the games. You're just going to be really ready for that cycle one, which is going to start after the games. So, you know, really try to take the time to, to clean up your movement, your intensity, and you'll be off and running. I mean, we haven't even really given them a high volume cycle of lifting, and I had you know, remote clients hitting 50 pound jerk PRs, a bunch of jerk PRs, of jerk PRs and snatch um, PRs and 30 PRs. pound back squat PR. They're just, because they're working on cleaning up that stuff and they're, they're, they have the time to focus on each individual piece instead of trying to rush through a bunch of volume, which doesn't work for them. Things are just happening. They don't realize they're getting stronger. Then one day they put the weight on the bar and they squat it and they go, what the, wow, that must be magic. It's like, yeah, no, and a few not really. feel the same exact way. Like, I thought we were doing more this time of year. It's off season. Why aren't we doing more volume, more volume, more volume? And now that they're all PRing everything. They'll be like, happy yeah. that. There's science behind that, but we don't want to piss yeah, anybody off. Seriously. So. <laughs> but also, like, don't hit too many big PRs because then when cycle one comes around and we make you find your percentages for your squats. Yeah, and these are, not these are want, big boy percentages yeah, too. You're, you're so. Not gonna, so fun. You're not going to want your, your max to be that high. So just calm down out there, right? Save it for your retest. That's what he's saying one. is sandbag. Sandbagging's <laughs> yeah. the key. I mean, that's my strategy all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, explanations. We're getting, uh, for those of you that uh, subscribe to the Plus Pro Complete content, um, thank you. And also, uh, we're getting a, a little better with our explanations. So we like to put out kind of what we're thinking about with each um, conditioning piece, each lift, each gymnastics um, piece. And we're getting better and more thorough with that stuff. And um, the more we explain, I think the more it helps people. We've got a lot of good feedback about that. And we will continue to do that. Yeah, keep the feedback coming. It's helping us, you know, write those things for you guys to give you a better glimpse of kind of what we're thinking behind them. Yes. And please feel free to always, like, post. And I'm pretty sure you can tag people in the comment section on that yep. Facebook thing, right? So <laughs> Yes, you can. If you got stuff, post, tag, whatever. I mean, talk shit to Rowdy or talk shit to everybody. Steve Smarge. It's true. Two of our biggest trolls out there. They're just all over you guys. Coming yeah, at they you. make my morning. You better not ask day. if you need an assault bike. <laughs> or a skier. Just don't ask. No, ask them. See what happens. Um, don't ask me. Yeah. You guys got anything else before we wrap this up? I think we covered it. Keep working hard. Have a good summer. Cycle one's coming at you in August. Be ready. See you soon. Thanks.